coming up on Double Tap TV. Steven Scott ventures out of his studio and goes hands-on with some really amazing tech at Site Village. The latest tech in second place with a total of five points. Interviews. Look, uh, the most useful product we can at the lowest possible price. Accessibility. I'm loving it and I'm sticking with it. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap Television. I am Mark Aflalo, joined by Stephen Scott. Very exciting show for you guys this week. If you want to get involved, our Twitter address is at Double Tap Canada. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. Stephen Scott, it sounds and looks like you are not in your studio. Did they let you out? They did. They let me out of the house and out into the wilds of England. Yes, uh, Birmingham, England to be exact. I'm here at uh, Queen Alexandra College's Site Village exhibition. It's a fantastic event that happens every single year. And uh, Mark, I have got so much technology to tell you about over this episode. I cannot wait. Well, I'm looking forward to it because it looks honestly like it's a very exciting time over there. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Site Village, how it came to be, what exactly we're going to see the, at this event? Well, I could do that, but uh, then I'd be taking that opportunity away from Karen Eastope, who is one of the organizers uh, from Queen Alexandra College, uh, who joins me now. Karen is here. Hello, Karen. Hello. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, so tell us about Site Village. I mean, you've been part of this now for a number of years. I, have. I don't want to say how many, that would be very ungallant of me. Uh, but you've been part of this, organ this, this organization, but also part of this event for a long time. Uh, how did it start? Okay, yeah, um, it started 26 years ago wow. at Queen Alexandra College, uh, which is a, a specialist college for uh, young people 16 to 25 who have a disability and visual impairment. Uh, it started in the college, as I say, so uh, at the end of term every July, our students would exit, go on annual leave for six, uh, six weeks. Sock Village would move back into the classrooms. Um, we held it there for several years when it outgrew the college pretty uh, rapidly. So we went to a bigger venue, stayed there a couple of years uh, again, outgrew that venue. Um, this Cranwell Park happens to be our fourth venue. And as you can see, it's grown and grown and grown. How big do you need for an event like that? I mean, are we going to be ending up stadium size? <laughs> no. No. I mean, it's a huge event my, and my it is growing. Heart, it is growing, but my poor heart couldn't take that. <laughs> um, but no, it won't be. Actually, for, for the simple reason is that we have a lot of noise pollution. Um, so we, we like to keep them as small as, uh, or not as big as they need to be. because. People that are looking at technology, they need to hear their screen readers and uh, it can get very noisy when we've yeah. got a number of visitors in. Oh, very health and safety minded, Karen, I like it. That's very impressive. Um, I mean, so this started off as a very small event. Yeah. Uh, it grew into this amazing thing, uh, this beast that now roams the country. Uh, that's an interesting way to put it, but yeah, it is because, I mean, Site Village goes around the country. It goes around the UK, north, south, east, west, but its home is Birmingham, and actually this is the big event, isn't it? This is the main event for Site Village every year. That's right, yeah. It's our flagship event, so this is the event that's um, the largest in terms of footfall and uh, in terms of a number of exhibitors attending. So it's got an international feel about it as well. We have a number of international organisations coming across um, to Site Village. Um, and a lot of our UK-based um, exhibitors tend to hold on to the, the, the dates for Site Village to um, showcase or launch a product, a new product. I mean, the kind of companies we see here, the kind of charities we see, it is about technology and, and that's how it often is presented to a lot of people. This is a technology event. But it is about services for blind and partially sighted people as well. So there's a wide range of, I guess, everything really for a blind person. Not just blind people though, people who work with blind people, who live with blind people, it's for everyone isn't it? It is, absolutely, yeah. We, we purposely have tried to encourage more exhibitors that are non-technology based or focused so uh, somebody wouldn't necessarily know what their local blind society can offer them or they can come and have sports tasters at British Blind Sports and uh, they, they can just learn about anything that isn't technology. If you're a techno geek absolutely this is the place to come because we've got all the latest technology and apps here as well so it, it's a good mix really. And it's really important to say that a lot of the technology we see here at Site Village is actually technology that's very difficult to find. 
uh, because you can't walk into a big electrical store to find the latest Braille display or a new CCTV. It, you can only see it at events like these. Yeah. That's why it's so important. Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think they're a big purchase. Um, the bigger technology items are a big purchase, and it's always good to um, get a feel for them. You know, see them side by side, make that comparison before you make that purchase. Karen, I am so glad I'm here. Uh, I am a huge geek, as you know, so I am having a great time, and I can't wait to show everyone what is on offer here. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, it is a great event. There is a huge amount here of technology, services for blind and partially sighted people, and I cannot wait to tell you what I found and what I may have spent my money on already. Oh no, I'm jealous. I'm jealous already because you're there and I'm stuck in the studio. So you know what? Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back and you're going to tell us all about the exciting exhibitors that you had there and we're going to meet some of them as well. It's Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott, live at Sight Village. I am Marco Flalo in studio, and this is Double Tap TV. We'll be back in a moment. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo, joined by Stephen Scott. If you want to get involved, it is at Double Tap Canada. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. This week, as you know, Stephen Scott is live from Site Village in the UK. Stephen, what kind of stuff are we going to see at this event? I know when we spoke to Karen at the top, she talked about all the different types of not only technology, but just assistive tech that's there but you're going to get really you're going to get more in depth in terms of what we're going to see today yeah i'm getting down and dirty with the latest technology <laughs> it is going to be an incredible affair uh, i am uh, going to be finding out about some amazing tech including uh, some of the very latest braille displays i'm going to tell you about a smartwatch as well that can help you get around independently and i'm also going to tell you about a device mark that you can clip onto your, the side of your glasses that can help you read menus even if you have no sight at all. That is brilliant. I am looking forward to it. So you know what, without further ado, let's take a walk through Site Village with Stephen Scott. Hi, my name is Dave Salisbury. I work for Dolphin Computer Access Limited. Uh, we're a small independent company based in Worcester in England uh, that produces software on a Windows platform for the visually impaired. Uh, you've got some fantastic products here at the Dolphin Stand. I, I want to talk about a, a range of them, including the Easy Reader app. I really mm -hmm. want to talk to you about that. But you've got some new software you want to show us. Yeah, we, so we've launched a new program called Guide Connect. So Guide Connect is on the screen in front of us, uh, and basically you've got 10 very colorful tiles on the screen. People who want to use a computer, I find a lot of people nowadays do two things with a computer. That is send and receive emails and go on the internet. That's all we all do nowadays. Yeah, that's um, true. So on this, it's the main menu, it talks to us and you can magnify it out quite large. You've got things like websites, you can surf the internet, uh, you've got a scanner and camera, so the postman's being, you open your letter, put on a scanner, press one key, it will scan that document, display it on the screen and read it back. So for someone who's maybe used to or maybe thought about buying a Windows computer or a Mac or whatever, this is actually something like almost a third option. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's the, trust me, it's the easiest computer program around. Tell me about Dolphin Easy Reader because this is an app that a lot of people are very interested oh, in. Easy Reader is brilliant. Easy Reader is a free app. It's the I only... love that price. Yeah. I love free. Being Scottish, we know that. Well, yes. Um, so Easy Reader is an app that, and it's the only thing we do that works with Apple because we're Windows people, yeah? yeah? So but if you've got a, an Android or an Apple phone, you can down go to the respective... Uh, Play Stores, Apple Store, download it free, Dolphin Ease Reader. You can access thousands and thousands of books. If you're back in the UK here, people are members of uh, um, the RNIB, Overdrive and Bookshare. Yeah. If you're a member of that, you can subscribe to newspapers. So you can have your daily newspaper delivered on your phone and read back to it. Simple. If you've got an email on your phone, you collect your emails on your phone or a text message, you can actually copy it, paste it into Ease Reader and it'll read it to you. So it's, it's having your books on the go. In terms of the products that you sell, UK only or worldwide? Worldwide. So anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world. Fantastic. And yeah. the app is available worldwide as well? Yep. Amazing. Hi, my name's Liam. Uh, I work in marketing for Bristol Braille Technology. Um, and we are a social enterprise based in Bristol in the southwest of the UK. 
um, and we make this device which is on the table in front of us, which is the Canute 360, um, the world's first multi-line Braille e-reader. Yeah, so if I said this is a Kindle for Braille readers, would that be right? I think you're, you're pretty accurate there, although you know other e-reader brands are available, of course. Um, but, but, yeah. No one likes what you're calling it a Kindle. But <laughs> yeah, but I know what you mean. It's, it, it, it is essentially an e-reader. Sure, yeah. In terms, of, in terms of the way it works, yeah, very much. You load your books on in, in Braille format, um, and then they're accessible from, from the library menu. Um, so the great advantage of that is it's very simple, it's very easy to use. Um, we've kept the costs down as much as we possibly can. Um, to make sure it is a really uh, affordable, effective way of reading digital multi-line braille. Okay, so really interesting product. Uh, can you talk us through it? Yeah, sure. So the commute is on the table here in front of me. Um, I think the dimensions are it's about 35 centimetres uh, by about 10 centimetres by about a centimetre and a half box. Um, it weighs about a kilo and a half. Um, and what it is, it's a nine-line, uh, 360 cell braille e-reader. Um, so what that means is we have nine lines of electronically refreshable braille, each of 40 cells long, uh, for a total of 360. Um, so per page, that's about a third of a page of a regular paper braille book. Tell us about the work you've done with the CNIB. Sure, so we're, we're, we're actually running a pilot scheme with the CNIB at the moment. Um, in the last two weeks, we have sent them seven canutes, um, and they are using them in a, in a variety of places. One of the really interesting areas, they're, 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 they want to pilot the canutes, is actually in their library service. Um, so they want to take some of their heaviest braille readers, um, they, they, they want to use the commute and see about giving them electronic braille rather than, rather than paper braille and see how that fits in. Um, so the CNIB actually have been huge supporters of us for the last couple of years. Um, and actually, along with our UK distributors and ABH in the United States, uh, they're really one of the first people to get involved and, 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 and buy into this product. That's superb. What kind of cost? I mean, obviously we're in Canada, so we want to know what Canadian prices will be. This is yeah. rolling out, I believe, in the UK yes. very soon. So what kind of price are we looking at? So we're a social enterprise. We're a not-for-profit company. Um, What's you giving them all away? We're not giving them all away, I'm afraid. <laughs> but we, the, the, the point is that no one's trying to get rich. We're trying to make an affordable product. Now, with that being said, it has taken a lot of development to get us to this stage. Um, but our, our pre-order price here in the UK is £1,695, which I believe is around about $2,000 Canadian. Now, you might have to add in a voiceover at this point and correct me where I'm wrong in, in that. But I believe it's somewhere around 2000 2100 Canadian. Tell me when people in Canada, in the UK, and other parts of the world can start to see this uh, and, and buy it. Sure, so in, in the UK, um, the first units which we're selling now in pre-order will be shipped by the 31st of October. Um, now in Canada, the trials of the CNIB are ongoing and I don't want to preempt the outcome of those trials, um, but I should imagine it will be within a similar sort of time, time scale as in the United States as well. You know, we're, we're testing, we're, we're going through the, 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 this process still, so I don't want to give, give anyone a false date. Um, but I would say certainly later in 2019, um, this should be available in Canada, in the United States and around the world. My name is uh, Ian White and I'm Orcam's trainer for Scotland. And I've worked for the company for just over three and a half years now. Uh, for those who aren't aware of Orcam, can you tell us what it is? Okay, so Orcam's a, a smart camera and I have one here in my hand. Um, it's about the average size of an index finger. It weighs around 25 grams in weight, very, very lightweight and very intuitive to use. On the, the front of the, the Orcam we have a camera um, and it has a couple of LED lights built into it for automatic light detection. On the outside edge we have a touchpad. Now if I stroke my finger along the touchpad, it will give me volume up or volume down if I swipe back the way. And if I tap the, the, the touchpad, it will take an image of um, something that we want to read and it will read that image back. Or if I'm standing in front of someone, I can take, tap the Orcam once and it will take an image of someone standing in front of me. And if that person is preloaded into my Orcam, it will tell me who that person is. As the name suggests, is it's about reading. It's about being able to access written word. And, and that's something where the Orcam really does excel. Absolutely. Um, we have um, a built-in automatic reading gesture where I could pick up a book, open up the page, and within three seconds, the Orcam will automatically read those two pages on the book to me. We've got to see this in action. Absolutely. So, um, we have the Orcam here, 
And at the back of the OrCam there is two magnets. Okay. And on the leg of my glasses there's a magnet, and we just clip it. Okay. And that's on the is that on the side of your glasses? That's yes, going on. on the side. So we can either fit the OrCam to the right hand side or the left hand side. It depends. It's, it's we have a, an option. If I point my finger, if I put my hand up to stop. I can stop it by making a hand gesture. Then I can turn the volume up. And that's taking a picture. Yep. It's now processing that image. Yes. And it will now start reading that page back to you. It will do, but it won't retain any information that it reads. Hello, uh, my name is Mariana. I am from Sunu. We are a Mexican-American company. We developed the Sunu Band, which is the first Sonar smartwatch for blind and visually impaired. So over here we have a sonar sensor, so through haptic vibrations it's going to tell you how close or how far you are from an object protecting the upper body. So if there's like an evil tree branch over there that might hit your face, the Sunuban will let you know and it's going to help you avoid a lot of obstacles. You can use the Sunuban with or without a smartphone. If you use it with the smartphone, then you can customize every aspect of the Sunuban like the range detection, it can be from half a meter to five meters. Uh, you can have a watch, you can set up your alarms, and we also have a compass and an accessible GPS navigation. Wow. So it's using Google Maps from your phone, and it has a compass integrated in the Sunuban. So in case you want to go to Starbucks, then the Sunuban, will, the Google Maps is going to tell you the right directions to, to get to the place, but if it tells you, walk 200 meters to the southwest then you're like okay what thank you mean? but where's the southwest yeah. so you can use the sunuban you can scan and whenever it starts vibrating then it means that that's the right direction where you have to start walking so you're going to have the haptic feedback from the sunuban and the voice feedback from google maps so you can arrive safe to your destination wow we've got to try it can i try it yes of course can definitely. you put it on my arm definitely will it fit to. this large arm of mine <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> I feel like we should be getting married at this point. There's some <laughs> kind of ceremony going on here. Uh, okay, so, right, okay, so that's interesting. So, mm -hmm. that, is that the sensor I'm feeling? So there's a kind of a, a yes. ring essentially on this? There's like a small uh, metal cylinder that you're feeling. Yeah. This is the sonar sensor. The Sunuban, yeah, I feel a little grill there. Uh -huh. yeah. The Sunuban is very small, it's okay. very discreet, it's very light. It actually looks like a regular smart, uh, is that a display? Is there something here? Yeah, this is the flat surface that you're touching over it's a here. Flat, like, flat uh -huh. display. Is a touchpad. Okay. So you're gonna manage the Sunuban with two buttons over here: navigation button, home button, and this is the touchpad. Okay. So the sensor goes aligned with your thumb. Why? When you're walking, naturally your hand is facing like that. Yeah. You can use your thumb as a guide to know where the sensor is pointing. Okay. So right now, I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me what are you feeling, please? Okay, so right now I'm getting a solid, it's like a solid buzzing, a solid vibrating. Constant vibration. Is that because you're in front of me? Yes. Notice what happens if I start to get farther. Okay, that's weakening. Mm -hmm. And it's gone. If I start to get closer. Yep, there we go. It starts vibrating more mm -hmm. heavily and then it's a solid line. Exactly. So if I turn a little bit to my right. Oh yeah, there we go. So it's a clear path, obviously, in mm -hmm. front of me. Exactly. Notice what happened if I'm just walking by. Yep. I could feel you walking past. I could it's feel you walking past time. and I could actually feel uh -huh. you walking past at the same time. That's really interesting. Is this only on sale in the UK at the moment or is it available around the UK? It's available in... We are, we are present in 50 different countries. So uh, Sight and Sound are our distributors here in the United Kingdom. And you also can buy it through our website, sunu.com. Stephen, I honestly, I'm really jealous that I'm not there because seeing some of this stuff, obviously, you know, stuff that we can't necessarily get in a big box store, seeing it before it's even available sometimes is really neat. So the fact that you're there and I'm here makes me a little bit uh, jealous. Yeah, well, I think you should be jealous. Um, although in saying that, when you see my bank balance after this event, you might not be so <laughs> jealous. Um, you're saving money by staying at home. I promise you on that. But it is a brilliant event and there is some amazing technology here. I mean, that Sunu band we talked about, which is an incredible piece of technology, a watch that can help you guide yourself around, that can even navigate you. I mean, that alone is an amazing piece of technology. And you know, it's only at an event like this that you'll find it. 
That's so neat. I'd love to see how much of this technology makes it, of course, to our side of the world, which I think a lot will, thanks to the big names that are there. Um, you know what? I think it's time for you to kind of pack it in, Aww. stop spending the money, really? get back to the studio, and then we could kind of regroup and talk about your experience and all the things that you had fun with and maybe see some of that tech that you bring home with you as well. Okay. Sounds good? Sounds good to me. It is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott, live from Site Village. I am Marco Flalo. Again, the email address, feedback at ami.ca. And, of course, on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. I am Marco Flalo. We'll be back in just a moment. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott. If you want to get in touch with us again, the email address is stephenfeedback at ami.ca and the, the Twitter account is at Double Tap Canada. Stephen, you're finally back in the studio. We have a, a, a fitting email here from a, from a, a listener slash viewer named Phil asking, Stephen, what was your favorite part about Site Village? So I figured this is a perfect way to wrap up this expedition of yours. Yeah, um, an excellent idea, I think. Uh, favorite part, um, all of it. And I think because, okay. well, yeah, because I think ultimately what I got a chance to do was kind of get the answer to a question I've been looking for the answer to for a while, and that is, What's changed in the world of specialist technology? There's lots of tech out there that's mainstream. Uh, and what was really interesting about Site Village was it kind of answered that question by saying, well, lots have changed in terms of the, the types of technology that is now out there. For example, the magnifiers, the uh, CCTVs, a lot of the new smart technology it has improved. But also, we even saw companies like Amazon there showcasing the Amazon Echo and the new Show 5. And you think, well, you know, it's interesting because what's changed is that the specialist world or the blind world has welcomed in mainstream tech at long last. So, yeah, I was really excited by it. I was also excited to buy things. I'm sporting my Sunu Band and my Victor Reader Stream. I am so pleased uh, to get those. I, I can't wait to do some reviews of those on uh, future editions of Double Tap TV. And uh, especially this Victor Reader Stream, I am loving it. I love tactile buttons, Mark. Uh, touch screens are great, <laughs> but when you're on holiday, you're lying at the pool, you want to enjoy a book, who can be bothered faffing around with a touch screen with a voice going ba 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 in your ear all the time? I just want to press a button and get to what I want to enjoy. You know, it's a good thing I didn't give you a credit card because I have a feeling that you would have come back with way more than just those two devices. You're probably right. Um, I had a look at Braille <laughs> displays, which I thought were amazing, although they are very expensive. Um, and the OrCam device as well. What an incredible piece of kit. You know, we're talking uh, a lot of spondulies here. That's uh, dollars, by the way. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of money, but what an incredible product. A device that helps you read documents in front of you. You hold up a document and the device reads it to you in your ear. You think about a restaurant menu, you think about going out for a meal and being able to do that independently, instead of what I always do, which is just order the burger, because, well, you know, you're always safe bet with that. Um, yeah, hopefully you're safe bet. Well, exactly, it depends on the restaurant, doesn't it? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think the technology has, has shown itself to be really, really good, uh, and even though there's still a lot of specialist technology out there in use, uh, I think what we're seeing is that with that integration with the, I mean, for example, the Sunu Band, perfect example of this, the Sunu Band, which I'm, I'm wearing right now, um, that integrates with my iPhone. So even though that is a, a specialist device, it connects with my smartphone to enable new and exciting features. And that means, of course, that, that technology isn't dead as soon as I've bought it. It can be upgraded. You can add more to it. So, yeah, I, I, I see a, a great future for specialist tech if it, if it follows this path. Well, we got to thank a bunch of people. we got to thank Mariana from Sulu, uh, Ian White, um, Dave, Liam. I mean, all those cool people that you interviewed. We're going to have longer form versions of those interviews online really soon. But in the meantime, thanks to them for obviously uh, entertaining you for a couple hours. And, of course, everybody at Site Village for uh, letting us be there because access to that kind of technology before it even hits the street sometimes is really, really cool. And we're going to see that around the world, not only just in the U.K. It is Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo. Stephen Scott, thank you again for heading out there on the road. Uh, thank you guys for being here. We will see you on another episode of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap.